You're listening to That Gets My Goat. Warning, the following episode contains movie spoilers. If you plan to see the movie we are speaking of in today's episode, we recommend you wait until later to listen to it. Hey, everybody. This is Rish Outfield. And I'm Big Ankovich. Welcome to another That Gets My Go. Now, do we have a name for these live-ish ones, the ones that we do on the road that we... Well, we don't have a studio. <laughs> yeah, we well, never we have had a have studio, a... but uh, you well, know what I mean. No the... home to go to. Oh, there goes a loud car. <laughs> but, okay, well, let's talk about that just for a second. And well, When will you have a home to go to, do you think? Uh, By the time this airs, will you be living in your new house? It's possible, considering how slow I am to do anything while I don't have a home. Um, it's just kind of up in the air. It's supposedly two weeks. Um, but of course that's when we can start moving in, so I'm sure it'll be slow before we really get stuff going. Uh, but yeah, it's still, <clears throat> still up in the air. The financing has yet to go through completely, so, you know, all that stuff is... So wait, the, the house is not officially yours yet? No, it's not officially ours until we put it, we pay for it. Any time it could fall through and then they're like, oh great, well I guess we'll sell this to someone else. And then but all the time that we spent in their painting... <laughs> but you sold your last house. That's true. And I thought that was going to give you enough to put something down on the new house. Oh, yeah. But at this point, all... I mean, that stuff all happens at once kind of a thing, you know? All that we've put down so far is a... What are they, I think they call it earnest money, which is basically a good faith thing. that We put, I think, $1,000 we gave them. And so uh, I got your money, Vern. Okay, I can't Yeah, do that it. kind of holds it for us in a way, but not really... They could just give us that money back and sell it to somebody else or whatever. Um, if something came up. I think it'll be fine. It's just the exact timing of it, unfortunately. I don't know when that's going to be. So we're still hanging out, living in the rented apartment, which in two weeks we have to move out of. Even if the house is not ready? That's right. So Ooh. hopefully it works out, the timing. <laughs> wow, and you have let the contractors or... Lego people know that it that you have to have it done by. And yeah, the the guy who's uh, with the seller says it should be ready in time. I think the financing, like the underwriters and all the the, the pencil pushers, with that guy Vinny who who is their spokesperson, are, are looking at it and trying to make sure that they're they're going to give us the money for it. And uh, we told them we'd put in a lot of pratfalls, so <laughs> I think it's going to work out. Here's the thing. Not for nothing, but... Uh, but the, Okay, so you, but the room that you... I almost said that you promised me. Where is the room that you promised me, Biggie? Uh, the room that you said that we would be able to record in, that exists, right? Uh -huh. And you've been in it. Uh, how is that coming along? Will that be done by the time you move into the house? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, like... okay, for example, my friend Jeff moved into a house two years ago and he had these plans for an extensive library. Uh-huh. And two years, all his books have been in boxes, waiting for this library to happen. Okay. And once he gets enough money, then the library, you know, they'll be able to complete the library, but... Okay, yeah, most of what we need um, is already available. We may need to purchase some chairs <gasps> or something like that. Because, yeah, my office chairs are just falling apart. I don't know what the deal is. All the wheels just keep falling off of them. It's irritating. You're fat. But yeah, I mean, it, even if we just have to sit there in folding chairs with a folding table in front of us, we've done that before. It's better than the kitchen chairs. So uh, we can easily do it again. Well, I, hate, I every once in a while I feel ambitious about the podcast. Uh -huh. And when that happens, we get things like the triple word score contest. Uh huh. Where there's like 40 entries we have to read, or <laughs> we get like the 13 nights of Halloween, or the whole month of February we're going to do a podcast a day. And I've been wanting to do like a another marathon where we just sit down and we do episodes every single day and put them up. We do easy ones like this that require very little editing. Uh huh. But we'd just be able to put them up and feel like we've done something and we covered a number of subjects because there's so many things that I always want to talk about but maybe they're not worth giving that week or week and a half slot to mm -hmm. no not when we can talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 
for an hour and a half, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to have to bump that with something stupid like this. Anyway, I just thought it would be fun to do another marathon at some point. I think we should do a half marathon. I've got a little <laughs> experience with that. Marathon things are actually pretty hard. <laughs> okay. Well, somebody somewhere will have to tell us what uh, how many episodes a half marathon would be. <laughs> 13.1, I would guess. Wait, that's what we did in October. I don't know how you do point one uh, episode, but we maybe do it. That's the moth episode. That one was the <laughs> point one episode. That's funny. I I thought about that moth episode the other day when I went when I went uh, camping because we, it was late at night and I was the only one still up and I was trying to do some writing and I heard something thump against the window and when I looked up, it was covered with moths. <laughs> there were tons of moths flipping and around and flipping their little wings and trying to get in because I had light, a light on, and out there it was dark. And for a second I thought, you know, I could see why this, how this could be scary to somebody. Uh huh. Even though I, mean, I thought it was cool and I immediately went outside, um, you know, so that I could eat them. But anybody else I could see saying, hey, that's, that's creepy. There's too many moths, and the the knowledge that they want to get in. Yeah, there you that's kind of scary. Yeah, if you take it and basically just turn the moths into the birds from Alfred Hitchcock, then uh, seems like it could be pretty scary. It's like the cockroaches from that freaking freak show movie. That scared the crap out of me forever. Yeah, but cockroaches are scary. <laughs> True. But maybe you could make moths scary that way. Well, to be continued. Right, that's not what we're talking about. We'll talk about, about that is another this, time. Is this the episode where you want to rant about your, your thing to rant about? We can. Are we saving that I, for another time? Are we talking about Let's do now? that next time because we can just sit down and if we are going to do a, a marathon, that could be a good episode in the marathon. Okay. The, the, you and I actually saw a movie together. Yeah. I think we've saw a scene two this summer. We saw right. Iron Man together. And we saw this. Yeah, and unfortunately, the last time when we saw Iron Man, we were able to just step outside the theater and just talk about it. And we were prepared to do that with uh, with uh, this movie as well, but unfortunately, uh, somewhere in the middle of the movie, I got a text from my wife saying the baby had woke up and is screaming and will not go to bed. And... Uh, she had to be up early to work, so I was like, ah, oh, okay, oh, we're running straight home. So yeah, I basically was just like, get out, dropped you off of your car and ran for it. And uh, that's a bummer when that happens. So yeah, and now it's been several days, and instead we'll be talking about it now. That movie was... The Lone Ranger! Like a... Like a something in the with a... Hardy Hyo Silver. That's right, like a flash of light. Yeah, there we go. Something, and, and a Hardy Hi Ho Silver. A lone ray. But oh, <laughs> how so I know that, I mean, I've explained before that I know it from the radio drama, but that's what, 30 years before I was born? Uh huh. I shouldn't know that. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I'd, I'd forgotten. I mean, you get to the part. And it's pretty early on, I guess, when you hear the William Tell Overture for the first time. And I was like, oh, that's right. That's the Lone Ranger theme song. When I was a kid, that's what I knew it as. I didn't know that was the William Tell Overture. It was the Lone Ranger theme song. And then it was the William Tell Overture when I grew up a little bit further and was finally told that. Well, that surprised the hell out of me that they would use that. Yeah, I mean, because too. it ceased being the Lone Ranger theme in the mind of anybody under 50. And so the fact that they used it not just once, but they used it again and again, and they made no apologies about it. That to me was neat. Yeah, that was cool. I really uh, appreciated that. Because I thought for the most part it worked. Yeah. Every time they played that, I was like, wow, even though it's, it's not made for that you know what i mean it's uh -huh. not a theme that I, I well it's hard for me to explain i mean but they took an existing classical piece and used it for the theme song to the radio show uh-huh and then they reorchestrated it for the 2013 movie and uh, i thought it worked just because oh yeah like you said that's the lone ranger theme uh-huh I wonder if anybody else, you know, I, I know that 
we are on the old side of people that go to movies for the most part. It's it's generally a much younger crowd. And I wonder if anybody, you know, how many of the people when they heard it went, oh yeah, that's the Lone Ranger theme, or if they just went, what the hell are they using this for? Why didn't they just make a, 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 a I mean, they had Hans Zimmer. Why didn't he write a new theme song for the Lone Ranger like they did with Superman? I don't know. I wonder about that. That's interesting because it is, you know, we, I think we talked about this before. We talked about the last time we talked about the Lone Ranger on That Gets My Goat was 30 episodes or more ago. Probably more than that. Probably like 50 episodes ago now. But Is this our third episode about it or only our second? I think it could possibly be the third. I don't know if we did a whole episode about it the second time. I, I know that we talked about the fact that they wanted to make this movie, but the budget was just too astronomical, and they said there's no way we can do it for that. And so they pared it down by like a million dollars, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> I think they pared it down by $60 million to be to give th- them the benefit of the doubt, but... It, it, it went an from, astronomical budget. Yeah, it went from unbelievably expensive too astoundingly expensive right it, yeah i was surprised because you came back like when we finally you know we 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 like applauded disney was it was mm-hmm. disney all along right we applauded them for saying no to such a stupidly high budget and we're just like yeah it's about time that somebody did this because this is just ridiculous i mean why does everything have to be like this and uh then a little while later you came back and said, oh yeah they pared it down and uh and then you told me what they pared it down to, and yeah, now they're going to go with it. And I thought, what? They're, they're still going to do it? Because they need to pare it down like another $200 million for this to be worth doing. This is ridiculous. And I still don't understand. You know, we talk about some movies. We talk about John Carter. And what was the other one that you were saying just earlier where it was just all up on the screen? Oh, uh, Pacific Rim opened up. Okay, after. Pacific Rim, yeah. It's one of those, you know, the movies where you look at it and you're like, okay, well, no wonder it cost that much because it was all up on the screen. And then you have The Lone Ranger, which, yes, it was a Pirates of the Caribbean 2 style movie where it just kept going and going and going and going. There was always something happening. But I don't know how many, it doesn't seem like it should have been that many hundreds of millions of dollars from what was up on the screen. Maybe it was all Johnny Depp's paycheck. I don't know, but sometimes you see it on the screen. Sometimes you don't understand. It's like they they made cowboy movies before there was three uh, before three <laughs> D before there was uh, CG, and they did it for so, a lot less. I mean, that was the go-to genre because everybody had their little ranch, and they could make them on the cheap with sets that already existed. And the audience just ate them up. And maybe that's what's changed as the audience just eats them up. But they were cheap movies. And this one was... Well, I didn't even ask you what you thought of it. Because you had to go the second that <laughs> credit started to roll. I don't think it was the shittiest movie I've ever seen. Uh-huh. I liked it a hell of a lot more than I did Man of Steel. Yeah. But I did not like The Lone Ranger. <laughs> yeah, that... I liked it all right. It wasn't bad. It wasn't, like, I looked at Rotten Tomato scores for, I mean, I don't remember what it was for uh, Superman anymore, but I did look at it, and I, w- I would say it was, like, 60 or 50 or something like that. Oh, this had to be lower. Man of Steel. And this one was at, like, 23 or something like that. And I just thought, I think that those numbers need to be switched. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. But I... Uh, yeah, I have to agree with you. I liked it a lot more than I did Man of Steel. There was so much more to grab hold of. There was at least some humor. Maybe they, that's part of the problem. They actually overdid the humor in a lot of places. Um, yeah, I'm on the same page with you there. And I, I don't know what to tackle first. But since we talked about budget, good God, that was a bloated over expensive move i mean the train stuff at the end just went on and yeah. on and on and on and yeah of course it cost 220 million dollars even though there's no way a western should cost 220 million dollars but it's just like it had so much cg and so i mean th- there were so many times when the actors weren't on a horse 
they were on a they were on a green screen or you know they weren't on a train there was no train there you know all that stuff that's where the budget goes and i i don't know if other people are able to just uh, say oh they're on a horse even though something doesn't look right they don't care i can't do that <laughs> when i see something where the lighting is wrong or oh the background is wrong or whatever or it's like oh that thing that they're on is not moving like a horse moves I'm reminded. I mean, it didn't ruin the movie for me, but there were so many CG moments in a movie like this where it didn't have to be CG. Now, okay, when they when the horse dies, you're not going to kill a horse. This isn't the 1930s. But that didn't need to be CG. You could have done it any number of ways. CG is the last one you would choose. A puppet horse. A stuffed real horse that you will tip over. And, you know, any of those kind of thing. you know? Right. It's like a drugged live horse. <laughs> a miniature horse. You know what I mean? A I, I, Shetland pony. It, I, I, I'm, I know a that these are... A little pony action figure. <laughs> well, I, I can guarantee you all of the, th- the above would have been cheaper yeah. than a CG horse. And there was a moment that you were like, oh, jeez, when the CG rabbits appeared. Oh, what? Because they were CG rabbits. But I the... couldn't tell if it was, oh, jeez, because they were feral meat-eating CG rabbits or if they were just that they were CG. With the fact that they, they, you know, that they ate flesh, that I was like, okay, I can see why those had to be CG. Plus, they were really, really good convincing CG rabbits. I'll give you guys started that. started eating flesh. What in the frick was the deal with that? That was one of those things. Uh, Nature like, was out of balance. <laughs> That's all they had to say. <laughs> it's just one of those things where you... Well, why Why did they do that? Why was that there at all? That is so... Nature was out... And they didn't solve that. They never went to that. It never got fixed. It was no. a traditional cowboy movie narrative. In the end, there was no nature out of balance. They gave you this, you know, hints. They kept saying, oh, yeah, he's Wendigo, and he likes the taste of human flesh, and something is wrong with him. But in the end, he was just a dude. He never... Maybe that was the original $60 million more that they wanted for the movie, where he was going to be a werewolf or whatever. And they dumped that and just... But why did they leave the other crap in? It was just ridiculous. And yeah. Yeah, they never dealt with it. You're just, okay, so they're just... There's feral rabbits and and that when, part the, where they the were end covered where with old scorpions. Tonto goes walking out. Is he gonna go? He's off to deal with those feral rabbits. Is that that what it is? That's going to be Lone Ranger two. Is old Tonto kills feral rabbits? I don't think we're going to get a Lone Ranger two, and it goes back to what we started with the second we sat down. When you spend that kind of money, it has to be one of the hits of the year. No, you know what? I take it back. It has to be one of the all-time money-making movies ever. Which just makes it one of the hits of the year, by the way. Just for inflation, that's the way it goes every year. Okay. But it's just, how many times have I said, please, you guys, you got to start small. I, like they can actually hear me when I'm talking <laughs> into a microphone. But you got to start small and give us some place to build toward. Like that unbelievably convoluted train chase with the multiple tracks and and multiple trains or whatever it's like i never need to see a train chase again as long as i live you know what i mean it's like they burned their bridges with the train oh it's gonna start we have upset nature nature is out of balance that's right it's gonna it's gonna come crashing down on we're about to be struck by lightning. I can see lightning in the distance that could make a really cool episode if you can hear the thunder and, and <laughs> while we're and, recording and then you get struck by lightning while we're recording and, and, and I have to call 911 and all that that would be really interesting wouldn't it that's right well I mean as long as you keep recording and we have it for posterity yeah we're sitting under large trees right now <laughs> too we may have to get up and start walking again like we were at the start but yeah that was that was one of those things it's uh my biggest complaint with this movie, and it's, I think, what most people complained about, the critics and so forth, is that it's just, it was bloated and endless and ongoing, like you said, you know, the train chase that just went on and on and on and on. And the other thing that really irritated me was just how unbelievably violent this movie was. <laughs> that Why? was my other point. Why was it so violent? But the thing is, they, they were super violent. You know, he cuts out the guy's heart and he eats it or whatever. But then in another scene, 
with like throwing the grapes in his mouth. That was for babies, dude. That that <laughs> right. comedy was for little, 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 little kids. Yeah. yeah there would be silly pratfalls with the horse or with Ponto being dumb and all that. That felt like what R2-D2 did at the beginning of that third awful prequel with all the battle droids and squirting stuff on them. And it's... In the same movie where a guy gets his arms and legs cut off and then he's set on fire. Where it's just like, how can those exist in the same movie? And that's how I felt with Lone Ranger. Five minutes later, he decapitates uh, Count Dooku with his lightsabers. Tonally, I was blown away by that. Because who was it for? Was it for the little kids that was like, oh, he threw a grape and it went in Tonto's mouth? He shot it with a slingshot, even worse. And he caught it like one of those really good dogs that catches frisbees. He needed that what a little one of those little uh what do they call those the bandana i guess or whatever that the dogs wear that catch frisbees <laughs> okay <laughs> but yeah it was it was so and just everywhere you know there were just little bits like the early the first train or i guess it's the no there was two the first train crash in the in the film the one where butch cavendish and tonto were chained together right it crashes into just as far as they've gone with the tracks and all the workers are there and they're like running out of the way and somehow none of them see this thing coming because you know it, well it was in stealth mode yeah it was in stealth mode and and it's so loud back in those days with all the jackhammers and and all the construction equipment they were using the, the big you know the, the engines on all those cranes and things that they didn't even hear this thing coming in this locomotive going at a speed higher than anything can anything <laughs> else can in that time well see but what you didn't see was one of the the, the foreman had brought his ghetto blaster oh, and he put in a was? cassette of mastodon uh, that's why they didn't hear it but there's the part you know there's like the guy up on i i want to say he's doing the electrical work or something up above and the train goes through and it's like snapping through all these things and the dude gets just horribly thrashed on the screen he's like flung off you know, and he's flailing around, and then he like hits into a post or something, and like breaks in half. All that it's missing to be like a terrible, disgusting horror movie is just a big splatter of gore. This is the only difference. They just they didn't show any gore, and so therefore it's okay for this absolutely horrible thing. You know, you see something like that. If you get on YouTube, and you see some uh, surveillance camera footage of something like that happening. You know, that would get taken down. That would be like, no, this is too graphic. This is too violent. This is too much. You know, it would automatically be... But because we don't see any blood and, and because we know it's just a cartoon instead of a real man, that a stunt man doing this. So, oh, yeah, let's just do that. And they kept doing that kind of stuff over and over and over again. You know, and like the, the, the charge of the Indians at that one point where they're at the, they're at the mine, they have their little... The, the, the cavalry is there with them. They got the train full of silver, and all the uh, command. It was Comanches, right? I haven't lost that in my mind. So all the Comanches are up there, and they charge down, and it looks like that scene from Mulan. You know what I mean? Where like all the Huns are up there, and they come charging down, and the the Chinese are like, "Oh, there's no way that we can get through this." And Mulan comes up to, with the idea to cause an avalanche, and that's the only way. But somehow a Gatling gun is, is just as good as an avalanche. They, they just bust this thing out and they mow every last one of them down. Every last one of them. Okay, we'll just mur- we'll massacre all the Indians too while we're here. Um, let's just see how much death and destruction we can put into one film. I don't understand what the deal was with that. Okay. I, I, and did that bother you more than the how long the movie was and tiresome it became it did to tell me to tell you the truth that was the thing that bugged me the most was just the overly violent nature of it for no good reason you know this is a western this is not a disaster pick this is not independence day or 2012 or freaking pacific rim where you know there's giant monsters coming in and killing everybody or superman where they knock down a building with every punch that they do it just it was it was ridiculous and i don't see why they would make that choice at all it doesn't make any sense well see 
as I watched it, I was able to make, and you, I know you were as well, I was able to make parallels with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and say, oh, this character is like that character. Oh, and this turn with the cursed silver, oh, that's like, you know, the cursed gold doubloons or medallions or whatever. Oh, and this is, you know, there were so many that it made me feel like, okay, they'd taken the template of that movie and that's how they sold it to Disney. Oh, it's yeah. like, okay, I'm we got sure Depp, we got Verbinski, we got the same writers, we have sort of the same story structure, and we're going to have a supernatural element that doesn't belong because it works so well in Pirates. It <laughs> did. The supernatural element was brilliant in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And it also enabled them to have certain illogical rules be logical because of magic and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But in this one, the, the supernatural stuff felt tacked on or it felt inappropriate or it just plain didn't work or maybe it was half-assed mm -hmm. you know because I mean? like that to say oh well you know this guy's a wendigo and this you know there's the evil and all that stuff and then to say you know what tonto is just crazy so so no worries folks when the lone ranger picked up that piece of silver at the beginning of the movie he had this flash of the death that had come before and the death that might come later. I mean, it was some supernatural flash. The silver was cursed. And then to later say, well, nah, that's just a story. I, I don't know how you can have your cake and eat it, too, in this case. In some, where, you know, where it's like, okay, well, maybe there really weren't no ghosts or whatever. I, sometimes you can sell that. But in this one... I don't think it worked because it was just, they were inconsistent. It was just old man Peters at the amusement park. That's right. And he would have gotten, gotten away, away with it, too. <laughs> if it weren't for you, Metal and Ranger and Tonto. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm railing against everything here, but I thought that the guy who played the Lone Ranger... Uh, Army Hammer. Army Hammer. I thought he was great. Armand Hammer. And, you know, it may be that he's Taylor Hitch or whatever his name is from John Carter and Battleship, and his career is over <laughs> because he's had this flop. But I liked him. I thought he was good and believable and heroic and, and kind of nerdy and all that stuff. You know, it just, I, I, I liked him. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, something we haven't talked about is what everybody else has talked about endlessly. Johnny Tonto, Depp's yeah. portrayal of Tonto is worse than what the white man did to the Indians. <laughs> I thought Depp was fun for the most part as Tonto. There were a couple of moments I didn't think worked, but for the most part, it was just like, like when I they shot a grape out of a slingshot and he caught it. Well, like there was the part where he was hanging <laughs> under the, the train earlier and he has this funny look on his face. And suddenly I remembered that funny look he would make as Willy Wonka. And I it's like, oh, that's supposed to be amusing, but it's creepy. I don't like Willy Wonka. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, he him feeding the bird all the time was a little affectation that they'd given him because Jack Sparrow had an affectation and things like that. And I I hate it to say it. I thought it was cute, him feeding the bird. Yeah, it and worked. It was one of those things that he kept doing to, like, change the the subject or something like that. You know, somebody asks him a question that he doesn't want to answer, and, oh, I, uh, feed bird. And when he would do with this trade, he'd give you a feather trade. or he'd give you bird seed. He'd or most brilliantly... The popcorn bag from the fudgeon bookend sequence. <laughs> I, I mean, I just wanted to stand up and go, what the F? <laughs> it's that. And if, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if eight or nine people had stood up and said, hey, that can't be. But it was just so odd and silly and stupid that I was like, OK, that's I noticed that. That's funny. I thought he was really likable. I like Johnny Depp. Yeah, and... I thought it, it, it was pretty... I mean, there were things that were silly and, and somewhat annoying, and, and that had to do with just part of the action pack thing, too. Um, like the end train chase sequence, when he just gets... He, he puts up that ladder, and he's, like, climbing the ladder in the middle of the train kind of a stuff, and you see him in the background go past, going up this ladder into nothing... It's just one of those things where you're just like, what, what, why, why do we have to have them do a sword fight on top of a rolling uh, mill wheel twice? twice? I, <laughs> why do you got to do this stuff? You don't need it. It was, it was too close to the Jack Sparrow thing because, you know, you can't, can you trust him? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he your friend? Is he, you know, kind of thing. 
if he had just been a loyal sidekick or whatever, I mean, he was wise and he was crazy. He was dependable and he was flaky. You know what I mean? It was just like they really, really filled him. I mean, he had this awful backstory and yet he was a comic relief character. Just a, a whole bunch of dichotomies piled onto contradictions. And I think the fact that it was Johnny Depp playing this part sold it. Whereas I would have been as furious as everybody else is. Not because of the color of his skin, for God's sake. But just because of the quality of the, his character. Oh my gosh, what did I just quote? No, the character he played. <laughs> not the... You know, it, it was a weird character and it felt like... Maybe Depp didn't want to do it, and this is how they were going to convince him to do it, by giving him all these things. They even called up Tim Burton and said, he still doesn't want to do it. What can we do? And he's like, okay, here's the dead bird on his head. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> wow, okay, we got our cake and we got to eat it too. And Depp got to do all sorts of wacky shenanigans and hijinks. Let's see, one more thing that I liked. The locale. The, place they, the places they shot this movie were so beautiful and so amazing and all that stuff. But, dude, that can't have cost anything yeah. because they're there. Yeah, I don't... Maybe it's because it's out in the middle of the desert and so they got to truck water in, so it costs a million dollars every week. And surely it, it would, water. yeah. And they built all of these things and there's another million dollars to build this town, to build this train station and to build all that stuff. But that still doesn't get anywhere near $220 <laughs> no, it was million. No, a million dollars. dollars a day to truck in water. It, I guarantee you it didn't shoot for 200 days. days. <laughs> I, yeah, Johnny well, Depp was the was... star of this movie and he was the producer of the movie and dude if you're the producer put your money where your mouth is maybe I said this in that episode hundreds ago where it's like Verbinski and Depp want this movie made do it for nothing show Disney it's like we will bring the budget down we so want to do this movie that we will do it for nothing just give us points on the end because we believe it will make money and we will you will be rewarded for trusting us and all that stuff but yeah, I don't want to know what Depp was paid for because I, I, I will dislike him. Yeah, I'm sure it was astronomical. They had to uh, cut the whole werewolf element out just so they could keep his salary in. I'm kind of glad that they did cut the werewolf element out. I just wish they'd finished cutting all that stuff out. Um, that but yeah, We could have seen half of this movie and I would have been more satisfied. Yeah, probably. Because it was... Did you ever see Pearl Harbor? That movie's like three and a half hours long and it's two movies. It's like, you know, everything leading up to the attack on Pearl Harbor and then America goes to war and the movie should end. And then there's a second movie, World War II. And everybody else except me friggin' hates Pearl Harbor. And I cannot blame them if that's the reason where you're like, dude, that movie never ended. It had a three act structure twice. <laughs> but this felt like that, too. It felt like. They were trying to combine. And if I didn't complain about that with Man of Steel, I will now. It was Superman 1 and Superman 2, the two Richard Donner movies, jammed into one insanely long movie. And this felt like that, too. It was Lone Ranger and the Lone Ranger Returns, or the Lone Ranger Rides Again, yeah. jammed into one gigantic movie. With a hearty high silver. Yeah, I, re I also really loved the locale. I remember there was the one part at the end where Tonto comes out in the credits and is walking off into the distance and... And we're looking at that shot, and you were like, yeah, that, that, that looks look fake. Right. It doesn't look real. And we had discussed that, you know, we've driven through country like that before, and it doesn't look real in real life <laughs> when you're driving past it. It's just so amazing. The only problem I had with that, I mean, it's so beautiful, but it wasn't Texas. They say that it takes place in Texas. They did not. That was not Texas. You know well, what I mean? That just kind of bugs me. For well, some I, reason. they do the the Golden Spike thing or Promontory yeah, Point or whatever. That too. I think that's Utah. Yeah, man. that did not take place in Texas. <laughs> they just moved it all. To, and you know, of course, the big final disaster happens during that. Which, of course, you know, if that did happen, it would be in the uh, history books, etc. But ooh, lightning flash. Um, yeah, I don't know that. I don't know why that bugs me. But you could tell that that was New Mexico, Utah, maybe Arizona, all that stuff. Um, it was not Texas, and passing it off as Texas just bugs me for some reason. Uh, Texas has enough. They don't need to take the rest of the Southwest away from us. I, 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 I know that I'm an old fogey, and a lot of the things that I complain about, like bad CG, does not bother the kids, does not bother the people that these movies were made for. But at the same time, who was this movie made for? Because 
Lone Ranger is not a part of my childhood or a part of, of my, you know, experience or anything like that. And like you said, we're at the old end of the people that go see movies. Lone Ranger is a part of my father's childhood. That's and weird. I don't think my father would go see this movie. And if he did, he would have been more disgusted than I was <laughs> by, you know, you know it's like, uh, probably by the violence, probably by how long it was, probably just by its absurdity. But the stuff on the train, like you were saying with the ladder, <laughs> if you can't do that with a real person, you have to resort to CG, then how can a human being do it? How can Tonto do that? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, in Man of Steel, as much as I hated it, and I did hate it, <laughs> you can't punch a guy through a, a building. You have to do that with CG or with miniatures or with, I mean... You have to re 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 rely on special effects. Resort. Resort to, thank you. But a lot of these things, like when the horse jumps through the fire and they resort to a, a CG horse, why not composite fire in later? Why not have the horse jump over something green? Honestly, and take out the thing that it jumped over. Or do like they did in The Lord of the Rings and have mirrors. Ha build a real fire there'd be a great big mirror so you're seeing the reflection of the fire where the horse jumps. Those all cost almost nothing, dude. But to do a CG horse with CG riders jumping through CG fire in slow motion so it's all the more scrutinized by the eye. I don't know, did, did that shot bother you? Because they showed it in the trailer and that's clearly one of their selling points. <laughs> but it... I to tell you the truth, I don't remember it, so I guess it must not have bothered me. <laughs> okay, well I... Is it the shot where they went out and then they landed on, like, the barrels or something like that? And, like, the, it crunched the barrels? I don't or know. They were inside the, the burning and, like, the barn. barn. And the horse was on the roof or the horse jumped through the building with them on it. or And, yeah, it was just, it was a CG horse. And, and uh, hey, I don't want them to hurt animals in the making of these movies. And if somebody said that that's the only alternative, then I'd say, okay, yeah. You got to go with CG, but it's not the only alternative. Anyway, I, I, I don't understand again the cost of that thing and the cost and the length and the the spectacle. Yeah, the, and all that. the sad thing is there was a good cowboy movie in there. You know what I mean? They had the the seed of it, the kernel of it. the The story is not a bad story. The the wrong brother stuff was so cool to me, uh, but before they abandoned it altogether. But you know what I mean? Like he was the, his brother was the hero. I loved that. And, th and there was a moment when like the boy saw him or whatever and thought that it was his father. And I was like, that's even cooler mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that everybody will think that it's the father that, I mean, sorry, the brother, the, the, the hero one that's the Lone Ranger. That was really neat. But yeah, they abandoned it so much to, so that when they brought it back at the very end, I'd, I'd forgotten it completely. I didn't even know what that was referring to. But yeah, I mean, there was a good story in there. Maybe a good two movies. But yeah, it, it, there was so much other crap thrown in. What did you think of the it. the framing device? The I little boy in the in uh, <laughs> talking to ancient Tonto. I'm not sure what I thought of it. I know that I said several times to you how much it seemed like uh, we were watching Princess Bride when those bits would come back in. Because he would point. At, at the holes or the illogic in his story or he's like no grandpa it didn't work that way uh, you, i kept waiting for him to go who kills prince humperdinck nobody, damn it grandpa why did you tell me this story him. humperdinck lives because yeah there's that part where he's like what no lone ranger was a hero he wouldn't rob a bank or whatever he kept interrupting and saying stuff like that although it was really uh, at first it was often and then all of a sudden you go huge, long stretches without it, and you forget it. And then all of a sudden it comes back in. You're like, ah. It's jarring. When yeah. It comes it's been too long. That, that That's weird to go back to it now. See, I thought it was kind of charming. But that probably cost $25 million. <laughs> probably. I, I, to I, do I, Tonto up and all that makeup and stuff. Well, I mean, that, that was wasn't just makeup, right? too. There was CG on his arms to make him super thin and, you know, changing the shape of his face so that it didn't just look like prosthetics. I guess it was charming, but it wasn't it just so that De that Depp had more to do. I don't know more interesting stuff. To it do? was definitely unnecessary, but I don't know that I hated it or disliked it. Even I still enjoyed it. 
but yeah, I don't know. It, it, that was the thing that kind of bugged me about it. I liked it all right. Um, I liked it much better than Superman, Man of Steel, I should say. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I and I'm too, I keep comparing it to Man of Steel because uh, that's a they're probably almost the same age. Those two characters, Superman is seventy five, and I would guess that Lone Ranger is from the pulp era of the radio era, and they're children's characters, or they've been popular with children for years and years, and then they made super long, bloated, violent, dark movies from them. <laughs> but in its favor, I felt like, except for the CG, the pointless CG, uh, Ver- Verbinski knows how to tell a story. He knows how to frame a shot. I think that there was a lot more going on in Lone Ranger than there was in Man of Steel. I mean, Ma- Man of Steel just, they fight. Ten minutes later, you turn the page of the screenplay. And also, I mean, how much did your affection for the main character or for the franchise affect whether you liked it or not with Superman and with the Lone Ranger? I don't think that it had anything to do with it. I think that Superman in that Man of Steel movie had very little character and very little to like, very little to latch on to, anything to make you care one way or the other. Whereas the characters of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, you know, they were ridiculous at times. They were uh, but they were always interesting, and they were endearing. They were they they made you want to watch and find out what was going to happen. They had characters that you could relate to and care about and latch on to, whereas the Man of Steel just had nothing like that. It was, yeah, it was just one of those empty movies where it was plot and character was missing altogether. Anything that happened in there was plot-driven stuff rather than character-driven stuff. Okay. Well, and you're welcome to your opinion, but I love Superman, and I can't help but think if I didn't give a crap about Superman, I might have like, geez, I don't know. It's hard to say, because a bad movie is a bad movie. Yeah, see, I But people are always telling me that you don't like the Transformers movies because you love the Transformers and you don't like things changed and all that stuff. And I think had those been original films made for the movies or whatever, I'd still hate those. Because a bad movie is a bad movie. But I don't know because I have an idea of how Superman should be and Mm -hmm. who Superman is. And Superman was a hero of mine. And to see him not be heroic and see him colored in all these shades of ugly gray and violence and, and just worthless action that ultimately means nothing. And, you know, I'll give it that for Lone Ranger too. A lot of that action meant nothing. When characters can survive unbelievable stunts. Yeah, well they do crap like jumping off of a train from one bridge, landing on a pile of rocks in another train, and then they just stand up and keep walking. Yeah. It's hard to emotionally like connect with a, something like that. It's not like you jumped into a train cart full of cotton. See, that would work. Or, cotton or dead slaves if you want to make it uh, as violent as the rest. Yeah, yeah, I guess that would uh, make it fit. I, I, I see. I, I don't really know the Lone Ranger character all that well. Right. Somebody told me that the reason he uses silver bullets is because they're so expensive that it teaches him to value human life. It's like only kill if somebody has to die because, and that's why you use silver. Because it's going to, you know, it's like, do not waste these bullets. Or I, I, And I don't know if that's the truth or not, but I was like, oh, I like that. That's cool. I never knew why I used silver bullets. I but... know we did use silver bullets. That tells you how much I know about the Lone Ranger. <laughs> yeah, like his whole origin story and why he wears a mask and all that kind of stuff. I don't know that what they came up with works. By the end of the movie, everybody knew who he was. So if he was to keep going around being the Lone Ranger, he goes to the next town and they're like, oh, oh, yeah, that's John Reed. <laughs> Yeah, he's that guy that, that did that stuff over in Colby, Texas. You didn't hear about that? <laughs> yeah, he wore a mask for a while, but yeah, it, it, he eventually took it off, and everybody knew who he was. Uh, I thought there was some sort of a reason for it. Like he. Well, I guess I mean, nobody so... but me complained about Spider Man doing stuff without his mask <laughs> on, and Iron Man doing stuff. Well, Iron Man never, he never even has a secret identity, so they, they get an out on that one, but it's like yeah, nobody but me complained, and so they said, you know what? Masks are passe. Let's not worry about the masks anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. It seems like the the origin story of him doing that and wearing the mask 
uh, is not, you know, once he gets rid of those folks, it's not necessary anymore. He doesn't need to still be dead so that everybody fears him or whatever, or they don't know better. Or I don't know what it is. I mean, the whole reason for wearing masks for all these superheroes is always to protect the People folks you love. that he loves. Um, and I guess the, the Lone Ranger isn't like that. He doesn't have a Lone Ranger cave that he goes back to, and he doesn't. Just, he's not like Zorro that just lives in town. He, he's the, you know, the rich guy that lives in town and is basically Batman. He's a dude that just roams all around the country. He just goes from one town to the next to the next, and he never sits still, and he doesn't have a home. And so there's nobody to protect, so there's got to be some other reason why he's got the mask on. I don't know what it is, but it, it didn't work the way they did it. Because, yeah, okay, so he protects himself from these particular criminals, but then after that, what? Yeah, that hadn't occurred to me. I, he goes I, to I the next know. town and nobody knows him, or they all know him, depending on how much the news travels. But, uh, you know, this is the wild, the old west. I mean, Telegraph is the best, uh, you know, news they've got. So, you know, people don't see his face. They don't know who he is. He could just go into the next town and say, my name is Bill Simpson, not John Reed. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a good guy. I don't know. It, just, it didn't really work, that whole thing. But I don't know how it's supposed to be, if that's how it went in the first place and what, what it needs to be like. So Yeah, I don't know either. That's They tried to give us a logical explanation for why he had to wear the mask. But like you said, they abandoned it. And uh, the idea that, you know, he is he has to pass for a dead man. If people think that he's dead, he's more effective. Uh, I really like that. But maybe we'll have to wait for that in a different movie when that really works. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was it was not a bad movie. It was not a great movie. I did appreciate it more than Man of Steel, as we've said a hundred times. I'm I'm still a little sad that it will be the last Lone Ranger movie that we'll get because it didn't have to be that way. The same issues that we had 50 episodes ago when we first talked about it are the ones that we have now. Yeah, that's true. I, it's basically a rerun of that. But when we talk about <clears throat> John Carter, it's a shame there's not going to be a second John Carter. Well, it's like, okay, it didn't make enough money to pay for a second John Carter, unfortunately. It's a, but this isn't the same thing. No, It's not, not a shame they can't afford to make more Lone Rangers. Yeah, they didn't need to make six feet tall, four-armed, green-skinned alien guys in this movie. They just needed guys on... And we talked about, I think, when we did the episode last, it was just after... What was that movie... Mars Needs Mom? <laughs> no, the, the Western movie that came oh, out. Oh, Cowboys and Aliens. Not Cowboys and Aliens, but I think it was the same summer, though. It was the one that did really well, 50 million bucks. True Grit. Had, True Grit. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Trying to get to, But that movie came out. It cost $50 million. It was really good. It and made like 200 it too. It made, yeah, it made a lot of money. And had they made the same kind of a film with The Lone Ranger, we could have had Lone Ranger 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and, and so on. And I think it could easily have made as much money as True Grit because this is the Lone Ranger. True Grit is... People don't know that. You know what I mean? It's not something that that continues on in our culture. The Lone Ranger actually still does. People know the, the name. It's something that hasn't gone away despite the fact that it, it you know, was, was a radio play the last time it was anything big. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could have gone on forever. It could have been a bunch of different things, and I would have loved to see Army Hammer riding around and solving and doing this kind of stuff here and there and everywhere, because it's one of those things you don't see anymore. You know, it, it would be neat to see something like that every now and then, you know? Now all you see is superheroes and insane violent movies, and and that's what we basically got out of this one instead of getting The Lone Ranger, which could have been neat. But, oh, yeah, this is like that. Oh, it's like an old... It, you know, it's like... When they made Indiana Jones, they're like, you don't see these old serials like you used to see. We're going to make a, a movie that's like one of those old serials. And they did it, and everybody loved it. They could have done something just like... You don't see things like those old radio plays. You know, we, we need to do something like that. And obviously, there should be a wealth of material that they could pull from. Well, maybe some of the blame lies in... I'm not going to say that it lies in Indiana Jones, because F that... But, you know, that was the biggest movie of 1981, despite Raiders. 
being a fairly low budget movie. I don't think Paramount expected it to be a, a huge hit or the biggest hit of the year, but Lone Ranger was expected to be a tentpole movie. Yeah, Fourth of July opening and for a reason. Every studio wants a franchise or ten, but they don't all have to be tentpole franchises. Yeah, there's there's freaking saws and final destinations out there that go on and on and on without being tent poles and i'm sure people are involved in those are just rolling you know they go home and they and they take their blanket that's made out of a hundred dollar bills and they peel it back and then they climb into their bed that's stuffed with hundred dollar bills and and they put their head on their pillow that's stuffed with hundred dollar bills and they just lay there and Smell that awful smell that $100 bills, you know, <laughs> I don't know what they do to money, but it always smells so terrible. I guess it's because you put it in your wallet and then stick it in your butt, you know? No, <laughs> you, sir, you should stick it in your pants. Oh, oh gosh. That's, that's what Someone should have sat is. you down and said, pardon the discomfort, but here's how... <laughs> here's how you actually do it. I, I don't know. I Just yesterday I was reading about the problems they had making a Bridget Jones 3. Did they make the Bridget Jones three? Or no, you saying they didn't. They never do did, even though the that there was, I guess, a third book, and the first two were successful and all that. And it's because of money. And I, dude, the Bridget Jones movie should cost effing nothing. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand. I, I guess it's partly agents' fault, saying you know your studio made X number of dollars, so my star demands this kind of money, and all that stuff. But. Uh, Oh, geez. Just, uh, well, like, by the time this episode airs, Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, because, you know, and the will make it sound too much like what it is, is going to come out. And, you know, I hope Sony or whoever owns that franchise didn't spend billions of dollars on Percy Jackson or whatever. But I'm sure they want Harry Potter numbers for those, uh -huh. you know, Harry Potter money I hope that to they've, come in. They've learned their lesson because this isn't hit Percy Jackson one. This is Percy Jackson two. They tried the Harry Potter money for it in the first one, and that's why it took like six years or whatever for part two to come out. And you had to get all new actors because the other ones are thirty now, um, because they expected it to be that huge hit. I hope that they've learned their lesson from that, but I guess you never know. I mean. There was those Chronicles of Narnia books where the first one did great, the second one did terrible, and so they're like, oh, we're not doing a third one. And then some other studio was like, wait, wait, but the first one did great. Let's try a third one. And they did it and learned the same lesson that the first studio did, that the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is well-beloved, but the other books are not as well-known. And Well, they so. were doomed from the start on those C.S. Lewis books because you can't make those on the cheap. Right. Unless you're going to have puppets or guys in costumes or whatever to be lions and fawns and all that stuff. Oh, you can't do that. That would be, um, oh, puppets and guys in costumes, you. <laughs> I'm just saying movies that take place on another world or in a fantasy setting or in a sci-fi setting or whatever are going to have a price tag attached to them. And they don't have to have a giant price tag, but they're going to. A Western, <laughs> yeah, to go way seriously. back to what we're talking about in the first place. My prediction is we'll never see a Western that costs this much again. I, I hope we don't, because there's absolutely no reason for it. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, we talk about that. We, we appreciate story, and, and, and apparently Hollywood wants spectacle. And it seems like there's been times like this before. Uh, you go back in the history of film, and... You know, you had Golden Age of Hollywood in the 30s and the 40s where they made these amazing films that were so uh, well written and they churned them out amazingly fast and, and they had all these great actors that played great characters and so on and so on. And then television came out and film started crapping its pants and they thought, oh, well, we got to do something to fight television. So a spectacle. And they went widescreen and they went super widescreen and they did stupid movies that were just stuff that TV can't do because they don't have that money or whatever. And they sucked. And eventually they learned their lesson. <laughs> eventually the studios all went bankrupt and the studio system ended well, and then we got the that. late 60s and the 70s yeah, when suddenly there. it was art again. <laughs> yeah, where there was movies worth watching again. And I'm hoping that something like this happens again because but it doesn't seem to be it seems like they just keep going bigger and bigger. And I guess, you know, we've talked about international money. 
is really fueling this this whole thing. Now that people around the world are going to movies, they get so much money, uh, no matter what you know how much it costs, they can they can they can handle it. Two hundred twenty million. Eh, we'll make that back. I mean, shoot, we make fifty million in Indonesia, so <laughs> we we didn't even make a fifty bucks in Indonesia in twenty years ago. So you know why not? Um. I don't know. It just it makes for nothing worth watching. This seems like a really crappy summer for movies. It does to me too. I don't know if that if it's just been a steady steady downhill. It kind of seems like it has been. Like I remember we first started the show. When did uh, Batman uh, 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 Dark Knight come out? Two thousand eight. Okay, so we did start in two thousand eight. Because that was like so. Our, that is that our this our sixth year then? Well, it's the start of our sixth year. Uh, but yeah, I remember that that was uh, the first summer of the show and we did an episode, like episode four or five of the show, we talked all about Dark Knight. And, you know, it seemed like it was much less often that we would go to a movie where we just complained and complained and complained. Now, even the ones that we would want, you know, I mean, we would complain about something like Transformers where I'm not going to see that. I know I'm not going to see that. I know it's terrible. I'm not going to even bother. Now, anything that even, even the stuff that we would like to see is also terrible. Things that would be great for us would be right down our alley, but now that's terrible too. I don't know what the deal is with it, but it seems like we're in a downward spiral, which is kind of depressing. Maybe I just need to start going to different kinds of movies. We watched uh, just the other day The Life of Pi oh, okay. on DVD. Have you seen that? Yeah. That was pretty darn good. It was very different from anything that I've seen uh, in a while, although there was still a huge money movie. I don't know how much they put into that, but you could see it all on the screen. I mean, it was... I don't know how much it cost either. Obviously, But it didn't cost $220 million. Well, yeah, dollars. probably not, but the the tiger was basically Jar Jar Binks. I mean, there, I don't know how much of their real tiger was involved in that film, but I don't think it was a whole lot. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe I just need to start watching a different style of movie. Maybe I need to watch the movies that are made for old guys like me. <laughs> well, you and I, I, I take it back when I said that we've only seen two movies together because we also went and saw 42. Oh, right. Which was the Jackie Robinson movie. Had I mean, I don't know how much Ford demands nowadays, but it couldn't have been a very expensive movie. The only expenses were making it a period film and Harrison Ford. But boy, I really enjoyed that. And, you know, it made me interested in that era, and it opened a dialogue between us, and uh, I, I wouldn't even have minded doing an episode about 42, about that moment where there was the little boy that was so bright-eyed and, and excited to watch the game, and his dad starts shouting all these awful things, and then the boy starts doing it, too. I don't know. For, for some reason, I was just like, wow. It's not like I hadn't seen that before, but maybe I hadn't. And, you know, all the special effects, the stuff that we see in all these big budget movies, there's only so many CG tornadoes or car crashes or, or whatever it is now, I can now see. They do, now they do Sharknadoes because the CG tornadoes just aren't enough. I fully expect Sharknado to be more fun than Man of Steel. <laughs> You're right. We are getting older. But, yeah, we're little babies for of the Lone Ranger <laughs> fandom. We are getting older, and yeah, at some point, I'll stop saying, oh, let's go see that, and we'll just wait for video. Because it's so short, that little window. And it's so much cheaper and convenient, and not to have to battle all the people texting. and Pay a dollar at the red box and watch it and then take it back. I, the thing is, I don't want to do that. I know. I know either. we've been talking a long, long time, but I, there's nothing like going to the movies for me and being whisked away and taken on an adventure and forgetting that it's a, a movie and be, starting to believe that it's real. I, yeah, there's a reason both of us went to school to be film majors, and it's not because we were the pencil pusher guys that wanted to say, eh, we need to change the title of the movie to Frozen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we were those guys that loved the experience, loved the idea, loved to tell stories, that kind of stuff, and... Yeah, there's just something magical about that whole thing, getting into the, the dark room and having the audience all there around you to be able to, you know, it's so much better to watch a movie with a, a bunch of people 
As long as those people aren't going, hey, uh, daddy, can I have some popcorn? Can I have more popcorn? Can I have more popcorn? Let's go microwave some more popcorn. Because <laughs> sometimes that can be annoying. But, uh, you know, even, even watching a DVD with a group of ten friends is better than watching a DVD by yourself. Uh, we, we should have a, a, not a Kickstarter, but just a, a crowdsourcing fund to watch Sharknado and do an episode <laughs> about it. That's the thing. That's something I don't, I mean, I guess we saw Battleship. But I, that's, to me, I, that is something I have not seen. I've never seen one of those made for the Sci Fi Channel, stupid, cheesy, bad CG crap fests <laughs> because I don't respond to that. Uh-huh. What happens is I'll see like the seed of something in one of those movies where it's like, oh my gosh, that could have been cool. Yeah. And then it depresses me because I see, oh, there was somebody talented that worked on that. And they, if they had just worked a little harder or had their priorities straight, that could have been a better movie. And that's the thing with Man of Steel and uh, Iron Man 3 and Lone Ranger. You and I have had conversations afterward is it, where it's like, well, oh, gosh, I, I thought they were going to do this. Or, you know, what would have been really neat is if they had done this. And with the Superman thing, because we've seen it done well, it seemed to me like, oh, gosh, if only they'd done that. You know, it's like, oh, well, they need to establish that he doesn't kill. Right. You, know, you know, you need to establish that he's a good alien before the bad aliens come. So that we know, the human beings know a difference. You know what I mean? Where the, yeah. there are these little things where it's like, oh gosh, we've had these conversations where there's a good movie inside a bad movie. Not to say that Iron Man 3 is a bad movie, but I thought it was a, a, a pretty good movie with a really bad last act. And we talked about th- ways that it could have gone or things that they might have done or parts w- that I hoped that they were going to do. And then they went in a different direction. That's frustrating for me. But it also reminds me that I'm alive and that my mind is engaged and I enjoy talking to somebody else that has a mind like that, too. And says, yeah, no, 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 Where they went wrong was this. And I'm like, oh, dude, I, I hadn't even occurred to me. But you're right. If they had done this and this. And, and then I get excited about a bad movie, a good version of a bad movie in my head. <laughs> and I don't know anybody else that does that. But, oh, my gosh, like after we went and saw Terminator 3. My friend and I talked for three hours about what Terminator 3 could have been. And I was just like, my gosh, this is great. Let's go see Terminator 3 again. And he's like, no, none of the things you just talked about were in Terminator 3. <laughs> Funny. But yeah, sadly, The Lone Ranger is one of those films. It's another one of those where there was a good movie in there. Uh, they drowned it. They smothered it, I guess is probably a better word. There wasn't a whole lot of water to drown it with, but they did smother it. It was mostly a desert movie, so there was not much water involved. It was a river, though. It could have been good, but it wasn't. Oh, that's you know that's too bad. And I hate to end on a depressing note, but there are movies out there that don't have the multi-million-dollar ad campaign that are coming out that we would love that we don't know about right now because the studios don't care about those until Oscar season comes. Right. And I, I'm, and also if you haven't sunk a third of your operating budget into that movie, then you don't care about it as much. There's right. not as much writing on whatever Disney has next. Oh, we talked about this Saving Mr. Banks movie that comes out in Oscar season. Really good. D- Disney has only put out, this is crazy, they've only put out four movies in 2013. And you can name them because we've seen them all. Go. Okay, well, I guess Monsters Incorporated, or sorry, Monsters University is one of them. Uh, Lone Ranger is another one. Uh, okay, I'll just tell you. Oz the Great and Powerful oh, okay. and Iron Man 3. Oh. That's all they've done in 2013. And they've made a billion dollars and they did it before any of the other studios that have all these releases and all that stuff. So Disney wins. I mean, even though Lone Ranger is a disappointment to them, it's not a crippling failure because they've already got a billion dollars in their pocket without Lone Ranger. So and and whatever Thor two does and and uh, saving Mister Banks and Frozen and all that stuff I guess that's gravy on their billion dollars and all that, but I fully expect to go to saving Mister Banks, which is the making of Mary Poppins movie with, with Tom Hanks as Walt Disney and Emma Thompson as P. L. Travers, who was the creator of Mary Poppins. I fully expect to go to that and be swept away and emotionally involved and come out of there with a huge desire to see Mary Poppins and to hear those songs and all that stuff. 
And so there's still something to to hope for for a movie. And I, and I don't know how much that movie cost. Hopefully nothing. If, if it costs more than $30 million, then somebody wasted their money. Well, they had to make a period piece. That always involves uh, some serious... I, I hear you, but they shoot in period 50s Disneyland. And do you know how they did it? They went into Disneyland and shot? Yes, they didn't build a CG set of Disneyland or a working set on a soundstage. They just went into Disneyland and redressed it to look like it did in 1958 or whenever the movie takes place. Bless them for it. You know, I, I just, oh, geez. I don't know how you can uh, just justify saying, oh, well, we'll all build it in the computer or we'll, we'll spend the money to build this. He's like, we need a tavern out in the desert and we're going to build a little city around this brothel or tavern or whatever. I don't care how much that cost. It shouldn't have cost however much they yeah, spent it on it. It doesn't cost a lot. Anyhow, I don't... I'm sets, you know, all they do is build the front. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like they're building a bunch of actual houses. And even if they did, the houses from 1850s or whatever are not big five-bedroom mansions that are going to cost you $300,000 a piece. And even at $300,000 a piece, how much can you build for the amount of money they spend for a movie? You could build a city... A working, an entire working city with everything in it for less than the Lone Ranger cost. Enough to house an entire African village or something. You could house them in luxury with the money you spent on the Lone Ranger. Oh, well, we're getting back to that. I was trying to put a silver lining on it here at the end. because oh, the sorry. The Saving Mr. Banks thing... It looks like a small movie, but I can guarantee you that I'm going to like that more. Yeah, and, looking at that trailer, it looks great. Yeah, and I don't see, I don't love Mary Poppins. Uh, I, I want to do an episode with you where we talk about, well, why do you like Mary Poppins? Maybe that can be one of our marathon episodes or whatever. But, you know, the same thing with, like, Jackie Robinson. The reason you and I went and saw 42 is you're like, oh, I love Jackie Robinson. I, I, did you know this about him? And I, when I was a kid, I did a report on him, and I was like, I didn't know any of that stuff. All I know is that Harrison Ford is in the movie. <laughs> and so I, we both saw it, and it gave me a great appreciation for Jackie Robinson. And it's just, yeah, the, the same thing with, with this Saving Mr. Banks movie. And, and they always make these movies and leave them for the very end of the year. And maybe that's what I should start looking forward to, is the end of the year movies, when movies like War Horse come out, or movies like, I nearly said Django Unchained, but Django would have done fine in the summer, because it was spectacle and... Whoa, I've never seen that before. I don't want to give up on the movies, even though I feel like a lot of them have given up on me. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to Comic-Con, and I'll tell you what I saw there that I look forward to, and hopefully there'll be three or four things where I was like, oh, I did, this wasn't even on the radar for me, and now I can't wait to go see it. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Cool. Well, we got that to look forward to, so that sounds good. Cool. Well, I guess we can uh, end this episode... Uh, yeah, I don't will even... this be our last movie review episode of the summer, or what else do you think we'll be seeing? Well, do you want to see Wolverine? Oh, is that still that's still coming this summer, huh? Yeah, I want to see it. It'll probably be another one of those where I'm like, damn it, why did they just turn it into spectacle? But yeah, I'd like to see it. I still love the character of Wolverine, so yes. Well, if we see that one together, I imagine we'll do an episode about it. Or at least we both see it within a reasonable time frame. Yeah, they've pretty much lost me on that franchise. And, uh, you know, when they announced years ago that they were going to do an adaptation of that particular Wolverine story, I was excited. Um, but I, I, there's nothing in the trailer that I've seen except for that I like Hugh Jackman <laughs> that makes me want to see that movie. So, What about the uh, upcoming Days of Future Past adaptation? That's one of your favorite X-Men stories, is it? It is, and I just, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I don't have any faith in the filmmakers and their priorities. And uh, I don't know how, uh, this is a conversation for another time, but how important is it that the filmmakers respect the source material, that the filmmaker loves the book that they're adapting or loves the, you know, the comic that they're making an adventure of or, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I don't know. I mean, I think the more respect they have for it, more likely you're going to get something really good. I mean, you, you, you mentioned this, what is it called? Saving Mr. Banks? I believe so. Okay, Saving Mr. Banks, which is coming up, which is just basically, we've seen the movie that it came from, that they're talking about, and now this is the chronicle of just how much Walt Disney actually loved 
the character of Mary Poppins and and how much you know he really wanted to make it something special. You know, when you see something that when when somebody loves a character enough, they make a great movie. But then after that, you can make a great movie about the making of the great movie. <laughs> well, yeah, they, there was that Hitchcock film with Anthony Hopkins. It was about the making of Psycho last yeah, year. Yeah, it's funny. I saw they had a trailer for that on uh, the Life of Pi. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> and I never heard of that. Sadly, there was a uh, there was one that with Toby Jones as Hitchcock that was about the making of The Birds the same year. Uh, but there was one with Lee of Schreiber as Orson Welles that was about the making of Citizen Kane. And to me, those are just fascinating. Why, why the hell are we still talking? We need to walk over here and get off of the road. I think we said goodbye hard. long ago. Loud, man. See, what I really responded to in that uh, Mr. Banks trailer was just how stubborn she was and, and unamused and all that and Disney was tr being his charming self and his showman self you know the, the host of the wonderful world of Disney kind of thing and she uh -huh. was having nothing of it you know uh -huh. and you know she tells him you know you don't understand m the point of Mary Poppins and, and all that and apparently I mean in real life and I hope they touch on it but because it's an in-house Disney project they might not but she was so upset with all the choices that Disney made and she had a whole bunch of these books and refused to uh, let Disney make sequels or let anybody adapt her work in the future to film because she was so soured on the process. And if I were making a movie about the making of Mary, of Mary Poppins, I would leave all of that out too <laughs> and just say, Mary Poppins came out on so-and-so day and to this date it's considered one of the pinnacles of Walt Disney's career and, you know, it's still a classic and Everybody loves it. The end. That's what I would do. All right. We're, we're supposed to have stopped talking a while ago. So yeah, can I cut out all of this stuff? Well, if you want to. I thought you weren't going to edit. I, I know I wasn't, but it just really feels like we veered off course. Okay. Well, cut it out then if you want to edit. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you hear some things that you don't know what we're talking about, maybe it's because it was edited out. This was going to be an unedited episode, but we can edit this whole part of me talking about this out. <laughs> How's that sound? Uh, thanks for listening, folks. This is Big Yankovic. All right, this is Rich Duffy. you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you later. Good night. Yep. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons, non-commercial 3.0 license.